Hello friends! In the last lesson we talked about PostgreSQL data types and learned the most common used ones. In this video we are going to see them in action and use them in our database tables. Before you continue, if you have not watched previous lessons about data types, database design and etc., please watch them first. So we are going to create table columns and specify their data types. One more time. The table columns define what's the data that should be in the table. Let's take a look quickly at the mockup. The first one was the login page. We have already identified that we need a table for users and created a user info table. Now let's see what we are going to save in this table. So from this screenshot we can see we need an email column and password. And let's add also username to be able to log in with the username. If you watched the previous lesson, here you can easily detect that these fields or columns should be character type. We could probably use wirecard with length 255 here that can contain strings up to 255 characters in length. The reason is usually usernames and emails or even password are not that long. But we understood in the last video there is no performance benefit and it will just do some validation for us to make sure that users don't accidentally input some string that is really really long. But for now let's just use text here for all these fields. Now we are going to move to pgadmin and start adding them. Come over to Postgres 15 here, click this little thing and it expands. Now expand databases and find our to-do this database. And here let's find our schema to-do, it's over here and expand it. Now we are going to see our tables. We said we are going to add columns to the user info table first. Just a reminder why we named it user info not a user. User is a reserved keyword reserved by database management system and we just follow the recommendation that states do not use database management system reserved words when you name your databases, tables, columns or any other database objects. Now let's expand this user info and click this little thing here and here go we don't have any columns added here. With PG admin we have multiple options for adding columns. First one is right click on columns, create and column. Here you can add one column at once. But we said that we are going to add three columns, so let's follow the other option. The other option is right click on user info table, go to properties, and here we go. We have column section here. Here we can click this plus and it will create multiple columns for us. If you want, we can remove. Yes. So we said we're going to add three columns to the user info table. Let's click this plus thing a couple of times. OK. And now let's add one by one the column names. The first one we call username. The second was email. And the last one is password. If you want, we can rename all these here. But now let's go to data type and start typing C H A R. Here you go. We have character varying here. It's just PG admin's way of saying worker. We are already familiar with this type from the last lesson. Let's click on it. Here we can design the length. You, you know, we can design the length for worker, for car, but not for text. If you want to say 255, you could. If you put here 3 or 4, and if somebody tried to enter a name with more than 4 characters, you get an error and you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, let's see what we have here. As we know, PostgreSQL supports a wide range of data types. That's why we have all this stuff, all these data types here. From here, we said for all these columns, we select text. Let's start typing T E X and here we go, we have text. We cannot set the length anymore. It is enabled only for character or character varying data types. So we set data type for all these three columns text, select text, select here again text, and now click save. To see the newly added columns, we go here to columns, right click, refresh, and here you go, we see all these three newly created columns here. The next table is task. Let's open up the mockup here. Here you go. Here you want to save the task's title, when the task was created, and for now, don't look at the priority and category. 
but look at this checkbox. This checkbox indicates whether the task is completed or not. So we have these three columns here, tasks title, task state, we could call it state instead of completed, but let's leave it as completed and create it on. Title, we already know is text. For the completed column, we are going to use boolean that has three values, true, false, and null. And lastly, create it on column. I think it is obvious, it has a, a date data type. Here we are going to use a timestamp without a time zone. From the previous lesson, you know that we also have a timestamp with a time zone. But it is recommended to save it without a time zone here in the DB level and add the time zone info on the client side. Now let's go back to pgadmin and add all these columns. Now right click on task, properties, and let's go to columns section. Here let's click a couple of times this plus thing. Okay, here we go. Now you are ready to add our columns here. The first one is title. It is a task title and the data type we said is text. The second one we said we're gonna add completed column and this type we said going to be boolean. Okay. There is another option. We could use a numeric here and use one or zero as a value. One if the task is completed and zero if the task is not completed. But for now, let's use this boolean here. And the last one is going to be created on column. We said we use a timestamp without a time zone and get time zone info on a higher level of application. Okay, we could use date as well, but as you know, timestamp stores both date and time, so we need both date and time. Let's start typing here timestamp. Okay, here we go. We have options for the timestamp. We are going to select timestamp without time zone. For now, it is enough with the task table. We are going to add more columns, constraints and stuff later in the future lessons. So let's click save. Now let's quickly take a look at category and priority tables. As you can see, we have only category titles here. So we're going to add only one column. Priority instead has two columns, title and color. The color columns type is also text as we are going to save a six digit representation of color. Okay, let's go back to PG admin. Let's find category table, right click, properties, columns, click plus. Okay. We said category table is going to have only one column called title. And its data type is text. Okay, save it. The next one is priority. The same steps, properties, go to columns. Instead, we have here two columns. So click on this one, two. Okay, the first one, the same title and its data type is text and we have color the same text and save let's refresh this table now let's double check all the columns one column here two columns here three columns here and three columns here. Cool. So we added all these simple columns to our to-do list database tables. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson.